Vegas, I think it's the South Vegas. Ryan here, and I just got done watching the Las Vegas, I think it's the South Point Casino 400, but it's the Las Vegas playoff race, and man, that thing was slow. It was a slow start, just kind of not many cautions, actually a fairly quick pace, and I thought they were going to be done with this race a lot sooner. Then debris caution, then debris caution, yeah, let's just get this one out of the way. I thought we were done with the debris cautions, and... I sincerely hope that with the uh, next-gen car, uh, supposedly they have composite bodies like the Xfinity Series cars, and I sincerely hope so, because Logano tire rub. Like, there were just too many tire rubs in this race, too much debris. I mean, it feels like these cars should hold, hold the body work at least a little better so that you aren't constantly having tire rub, tire rub, debris caution, debris caution. I mean, it was a, ultimately, I think it was a debris caution that ended up ending the long green flag run that we were on what, that gave McDowell, John Hunter Nemechek, Chris Buescher, Ryan Newman, Corey LaJoy, top 10 track position. I mean, so, yeah, that that would definitely be uh, kind of the big takeaway I have from this race would be, uh, yeah, debris, debris cautions and tire rubs, both created from... In my opinion, not a sturdy enough car. Uh, the sheet metal being too easy to bend. Um, and too easy to kind of end up out of place. Especially with the beating and banging we see in NASCAR. I mean, you, you saw it today. I mean, how many drivers ended up with tire rubs from minor incidents? Like when Denny Hamlin went underneath Cowboys. Sure, it was an aggressive move. But no one really made that heavy a contact. And I don't think Kyle ended up with a tire rub. But I know Logano did. And that ain't uh, the best situation in the world. No, and it really looked for a while like this uh, race was going to fall into Matt Pedetto's hands considering he had um, fresher tires and got the uh, track position late in this race. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. He's still got two days left, so in a couple days we'll be uh, talking about him and his silly season stuff because his contract is due to be renewed by the um, 30th. So we got a few days left to um, for them to re-sign that, and then we'll be talking about either him re-signing or potentially where he ends up going if he is out. If he is out there, I see very few other options other than Cindric going to that car just because cindric has been tearing it up in Xfinity, and I can see them promoting him. Although I don't think that would be the best move for Cindric's career, and honestly, I'm not sure it would be the best short-term move for Penske, I think maybe getting someone like an Eric Jones or a Kyle Larson to um, fill that seat, at least until the next-gen car gets here, just because I think the next-gen car, from the sounds of it, sounds like it's going to be more like an Xfinity car than a uh, cup car, um, so I'd almost say you're going to get better practice being an Xfinity, even if it is lesser competition. Um, and you're going to keep a lot of excitement around your name if you're running for a championship. But we haven't even really talked about the winner of this race, but uh, Kurt Busch. The Busch brothers' drought is over. Oh, wait, this is Kurt Busch. Still a drought from, la um, from his 2019 win that he got back at uh, Kentucky, but not the drought we were um, that I think a lot of us are probably wishing was over. At least for me, I personally wish it was over. Kyle Busch still winless, came home sixth place, and to be honest, I think he ended up in probably about as good a spot he could with a winner like Kurt Busch, because of course Kurt's going to move that uh, cut line and really put some pressure on those guys below the cut line, um, going into the uh, next two races at Talladega and the Roval being two very unpredictable races and him being the last place car, and I thought he would be a pretty easy elimination in this round, assuming he didn't win. Now he's got to win, so he's in the round of eight. Um, I think Hamlin and Harvick are pretty easy locks. I think outside of that, a wreck could end any one season at Talladega. I think any of the guys that aren't Hamlin and Harvick above the cut line could get knocked out from just one bad week and just one wreck at the Ro or at the Roval or Talladega. I think that very easily could end up becoming the case. And other than that, you've also got um, situations like um, 
You've got to worry about also the points battle across Bol across two very unpredictable races. And, I mean, Bowman looked good tonight. Maybe that extra um, wind tunnel time that uh, we found out about earlier this week. Uh, I didn't talk about it on my channel because I just didn't have the time to get a video up. But, um, yeah, Hendrick had a fine for too much wind tunnel time. And looks like it might have helped the 88 out because he ran pretty well here today and ended up putting himself nine points above Kyle Busch for that final cut spot. But if he has an issue at uh, Talladega, a guy I thought would not make it through this round, Kyle Busch, might be in position to do just that. I think everybody else below the cut line, Clint Boyer, Eric Amarillo, and Austin Dillon, um, are pretty much must-wins at the next two races. In particular, Austin Dillon, who was having a, a fantastic night. Um, has something mechanical go wrong? I'm not even sure what. It seems like a belt might have broken or something uh, inside the engine or so uh, something like that. But, yeah, his car just it didn't last. And uh, that's a very s solid run for Austin Dillon. Probably brought to an end here unless he gets his first multi-win season. Um, then you've got Eric Amarillo and Clint Boyer. I felt like... If there wasn't a a uh, surprise winner, I felt like it was going to be um, one of them or or uh, Kyle advancing. That was like the one way I saw Kyle advancing was going to be outpointing one of them, assuming no surprise winners. Now you have Kurt Busch winning at Vegas. Uh, also, his first win at his home track of Las Vegas. So, yeah, pretty good, um, <laughs> pretty good feel good story there for him. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna put. Uh, both Boyer and Amaral into must wins. Going to put Dylan in a must win. So lots of drivers kind of having the pressure put on them right before Talladega. I would almost rather be in Dylan's situation though than Kyle's. Because in Kyle's situation or even Bowman's. You have to worry the entire time about protecting points and trying to build a points gap. In Austin Dylan's case he needs to go out of at Talladega and go purely for wins. Same thing at um, Roval. Pure, purely for the win. Same thing for Boyer and Amarola. I mean, they can just completely go all out for the wins. Now, maybe they go for a slight points grabbing strategy in case the wrecks at Talladega late in the race fall their way to where they end up being able to point their way back in. Because that would be a horrible feeling to have giving up points um, to try and get track position later in the race and find out that that track or that those extra points would have gotten you in and your track position really didn't help you end up winning the race. But yeah, so that's going to be a big uh, storyline to watch going forward with um, a lot of the uh, points things. But yeah, that's the big thing though I wanted to talk about was the uh, debris and the tire rubs because really, I mean... Like, while I did think that ca that uh, the cautions did start to kind of break the race up, so it wasn't just purely 80 lap run, 80 lap run, 107 run. Um, and that kind of goes back to another point I've had about these, um, about the new way they decided to break up the stages and make it more like thirds, is you had, what, one green, one, two green fly pit stops possibly? Because you had the green fly pit stop in stage two, but you had a comp caution in stage one, and then only 80 laps. So, I mean, you got it broken up by the comp caution, and then a one pit stop race at the end. I mean, like the reason why I like the format that they had before this, where it was essentially the first half was, two sta was the first two stages, and then the second half, is that I felt like it gave a good mix. And I think I even said this in a video months ago when they first announced the uh, changes to the f stage format is that it gives a good balance of short sprints that are entertaining for the more casual fans or the fans that tune in and don't even realize that the race is going on flip on to NBC or Fox and see hey the NASCAR race is going on okay let's see uh, oh 30 or 20 laps left in the stage at Daytona okay I'll sit down and at least watch the end of the stage. Maybe you hook them in then um, during that to watch the rest of the race. But now it feels like, okay, you tune in and it's like, okay, 50 laps to go. Well, do you really want to stick around for 50 laps of a race 
just to get the first stage break. Um, and then at the end, you also kind of disinterest some of the fans, some of the more traditional fans that like to see long, multi-run. Because, I mean, that's something else that you would see potentially a two-stop race in the final stage. I don't remember any races this year that are going to be broken up to the point where you need a second pit stop in that third stage if it runs green flag the entire way. Maybe on tires you would, but on fuel, I believe there's no races on the schedule that actually require that. So, uh, that's kind of like the two things. Is I feel like stages felt a little long. You know, like they took up a bit too much of the time in this race. I don't know necessarily about shorter races for this one in particular. I would say maybe the spring um, Las Vegas race, if they keep that one around. Because the spring, uh, like conditions like the uh, temperature and whatnot just don't seem to play as well to good racing i mean i feel like the spring race the last three years that we've had two races have tradition have con consistently been worse and i don't think it's all because of the playoff drama either so uh, that's just kind of my thoughts on it i'd love to hear your guys thoughts on any of what i've talked about in the uh comment section below i try i try and read every single comment down there so Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, leave a like on the video. Comment down below, of course, your thoughts on anything I've said in the video. Subscribe if you guys are new so you guys never miss an episode. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Live stream or whatever you guys decide to do. The rest of your night. Have a great night, everybody. Goodbye! <laughs>